The mainstream media has resorted to publishing stories about President Trump that they think are going to hurt him. Let me give you two headlines. One from the Daily Beast. Trump outlines a terrifying immigration plan at a campaign rally. The plan is to militarize the southern border. The Daily Beast thinks that's bad for Trump. Second of all, uh, Axios, if Trump wins next year, he'll have much more power than in his first term and fewer restraints on carrying out his political agenda. More voters driven into the arms of Donald Trump. Get ready for hour two of the Mike Gallagher Show on Salem News Channel. It's coming up. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We beat Fauci on COVID when they were trying to shut down and keep kids out of school. We stopped it. We beat the Democratic Party on election security. We made sure that they had universal voter ID. No, uh, no, uh, Soros when it came to criminal justice uh, uh, issues. Now, I've got, and that to me is sort of a metaphor for the DeSantis campaign. And that might, you might see that as unfair. I promise you, I have nothing against the guy. I guarantee you, if, if Ron DeSantis was the nominee, emerges as the nominee, I'm all in for Ron DeSantis. I'm a Floridian and I know what kind of job he's done as the governor of this great state. And it is a great state, believe me. And, and a lot of it has to do with his leadership. So I'm not, I'm really not anti-DeSantis. But it absolutely appears that there is to be no stopping Donald Trump. And you ought to see what the mainstream media, I mean, they're, they're now resorting to writing articles that they think will hurt Trump. And they don't even realize how they're helping him. I mean, here's a headline from uh, I mean, Wall Street Journal. Biden's agenda hangs in the balance as, the, as a tough election year approaches. The Daily Beast. Trump outlines terrifying immigration plan at Nevada campaign rally. You want to know what the terrifying plan is? To put the military on the southern border. <laughs> they think it's terrifying to have law enforcement and mili a military presence on the southern border to stop the tsunami of illegal immigrants. They think that's terrifying. And here's the best one from Mike Allen's Axios this morning. Headline, Trumpy Congress. Mike Allen writes, if former President Trump wins, he'd have much greater power than in his first term and fewer restraints on carrying out his political agenda. I guess Axios thinks that's a bad thing. Millions of Americans read that and they say, I'm all in. That's why I'm voting for him. I mean, a, th this top strategist's departure, think about what it means to bail on Governor DeSantis a month before the Iowa caucus. Jeff Rowe, a top strategist, for the main super PAC supporting DeSantis's campaign, announced his resignation late Saturday. This is the latest, I'm reading here from Politico, the latest in a string of departures from the organization. The pro-DeSantis group has been enveloped in turmoil. Two weeks ago, it fired three of its top officials. I, I, honest to goodness, I've never seen something like this happen in politics in my life. I've been covering this for 40 plus years. Have you? How do you explain it? It's as if Ron DeSantis is a bad candidate. Spoiler alert, he's not. But of course, he's not Trump. And it's it, perhaps it's not his time. It's how I feel, but evidently it's how the country feels. He, he needs to just unify behind Donald Trump, keep his powder dry, try again in 28, or join the Trump ticket in 2024, which I think is still a possibility. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a top of my wish list, but it was just the wrong time for him. How else do you, can you describe this? Let, let's, let's talk a little bit about this. We're a week from Christmas. We're a month from the Iowa caucus. 
We're, the primary season is almost here, and it looks like DeSantis's campaign has literally gone completely adrift, totally off the rails. And, and maybe you don't see it that way either. Maybe you'll say anything can happen. Maybe DeSantis comes from behind. I mean, Nikki Haley is beating Don, uh, Ron DeSantis in places like New Hampshire. And in some polls, even I think Iowa. What the heck went wrong? Let me just turn it over to you. 800-655-MIKE. We're in the Relief Factor Studios for a Monday, December the 18th. Merry Christmas from all of us at Team Gallagher. Let's dive in together. You tell me what has gone wrong with the DeSantis campaign. It, it's not him, I don't think. Do You tell me every time you've seen him in a debate, every time you see him give a speech, tell me you're not completely satisfied with what he has to offer. Again, presuming you're not applying Trump to the equation. Of course, that's the problem. You have to. This is Trump's time. This is Trump's year. Even with everything they're throwing at him, which I admit makes it even crazier. I want lots of phone calls on this, please. First-time callers especially. Flood the zone with your number, with your call, rather. 800-655-MIKE. That's my number. You make the call. I take the call. Michael screens your call, and he's doing a great job as our brand-new screener. Welcome, Michael, to Team Gallagher, who just started Friday. 800-655-MIKE. One open line. Press 1 to come on air. 2 to leave a voicemail. Or text us your comments on the MyPillow text line. 800-655-6453. I have a simple question for you. For you on this Monday before Christmas. What went wrong with Team DeSantis? What happened? It's like that guy, that character, what happened? What happened? What in the world went wrong? This is one of the craziest, wildest, most insane things I think I've ever witnessed play out.